group for classification of a giant marine snail. <laughs> <laughs> So as that name implies, they're, they're marine snails and feed on local plant production. I mean, I know you guys aren't in kindergarten, so. <laughs> um, if you have any particular questions, please ask. So those ones I, I, I showed you guys at, at um, Rancho Marino, they were, you know, about two thirds the size of those. Those, those, those are honking. Those are ones that we cultured on, on the board there. And those are a couple wild ones that we just donated a couple, couple days ago. Oh, cool. So deliciously tender. Mm. Oh, and they're that size. And they're that size. And uh, they're not just for dinner anymore. That, <laughs> that size is just perfect on a, on a muffin with a hollandaise sauce. So oh, ab really? abalone benedict. Mm. Oh, man, is it good. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. So how what, what's been going on with COVID? With so has demand spiked? Has it has it stayed the same? What's what's going on with people's buying of abs during the last couple of years? Well, you know, during COVID, uh, it was kind of a mixed blessing. We we of course had no sales. All the restaurants shut down completely. We worked mail order as best we could, but that was that was really real low volume. But so you, you weren't selling to the public like retail here? Not much. Really? I mean, we were here. But, but people weren't coming in? People weren't coming okay. in. Just, so the silver lining to that is the, you know, as long as we were able to feed, continue feeding our abalone, even though we couldn't sell them, they just continued to grow and not get handled. And so, you know, that produced the best bumper crop of abalone I've ever seen us wow. produce. Wow. Yeah. And continues as well. I mean, it, it was it was a mix of just having some really good genetics uh -huh. in the seed lot that we spawned and and boy those those just responded very well to Cool. Just nothing but getting fat and happy. So now that uh, the ab farm is down, you guys are doing the spawning at Moss Landing? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so we do it all from start to finish. We, you know, collect or select uh, grab it brood stock and in the hatchery uh, do the spawning and, and rear the larvae and, and, and the spat until they're um, till they're about an inch or a little bit long larger and about a year year and a half old before we bring them down transfer them from the nursery to, to this facility and start feeding them giant kill and, and growing them out to market size and so the if we had gone to the abalone farm you guys would have seen that the, it's it's you know seawater pumped out of the ocean into uh terrestrial tanks right but these guys have have an, had a novel solution so these guys just have them in the ocean itself so they don't have to move seawater per se no we have to move people i mean the biggest difference between our operation and that is is we're more uh, labor intensive they're higher energy and mechanical and well, the other big difference is, is, is our abalone look and taste like a real wild abalone, whereas their abs are beautiful, they're healthy, they're fat and meaty, but the flavors are really mild because they don't have access to nutrients that, that an ocean-grown abalone does have access to. Yeah, it really makes a big difference. And these guys also pioneered the use. So, so obviously, giant kelp macrocystis is what these guys mostly eat. But these guys also pioneered this uh, two things that I think of. One is is using other al algal species to add more flavor and actual color to the shells. But then also um, um, a sil s silaging. What do you guys call it? Silaging. Yeah, stor storing the. So go for it. T tell them about those guys. So we we you know realize that we needed to find an alternate source of food for our abalone, especially during the winter months and especially during El Nino events when there's you know, uh, huge winter storms that, that focus on the central part of California, huge swells and, and those swells could rip loose, tear loose all kelp up and down the entire coastline. And there's, there's feast for a while with drift kelp 
and then it's famine and there's nothing out there that we can collect either from the surface or by diving I mean that, that wave energy just rips every shred out plus the waters are warmer during the El Nino and there's there's fewer nutrients for the algae to use as plant food so it's poor growing conditions so we we thought to safeguard our operation which depends on the healthy kelp forest we needed to figure out some ways to preserve kelp and so the idea would be to go out during the spring and summer when the canopy is really abundant and harvest a little extra every week and then the first year we took a page from the dairy farmers of how they silage alfalfa and one of the effects that proved true for abalone feed, one of the effects of silage alfalfa for cattle is it increases the, the uh, protein? No, the, the, just the volume of milk oh. and, and, and density of beef. Um, you know, dairy farmers or dairy cattle produce more milk uh, fed on, on uh, silage and, and denser beef uh, for the beef cattle. Uh, because the, the alfalfa is, is essentially compressed and uh, they get more nutrients per bite. I mean, it's kind of simple and, and the same, same thing worked here. So the way they silage alfalfa was to dry it down to a moisture content of about 30% and then seal it in, in airtight bags. It goes anaerobic and, and the oxygen gets depleted and it, it quits decomposing and, and it's preserved pretty much an indefinite shelf life. The pluses to that is it was, you know, really light, easy to easy to handle, easy to store. Uh, but the downsides, at least for us in drying kelp, was we have to have a large area to spread it out. Essentially, you know, long clotheslines to hang it up. It was very labor, labor and time intensive to hang on all that kelp and then remove it and pack it. Um, Required a lot large areas, I said, and then it was weather dependent. You know, if it if it was misting, drizzling, or raining, it would whatever was hanging out would just go bad, just turn into mush. So, I mean, that worked that year. It, it certainly proved the the idea, the theory that it could work. Um, the next year, we we took a page from um, days gone by. Before refrigeration, we salted everything to preserve food, and so we, we got you know solar salt, salt uh, 50 pound bags, and and salted the kelp under the farm, so it was it was a whole lot easier to access. Um, we could do it regardless of weather, and and the salt would just extract the moisture and go right back into the ocean and and. Uh, Again, preserved it pretty much indefinitely. Came in a very long shelf life, and all the same principles applied. It just, you know, uh, it's compressed. Abalone get more nutrients per bite. One thing we had to be real careful of, and it scared the daylights out of us. Uh, one day we had a, a cold water aquarium right here at the front door. Oh yeah. Some abs in it, and we fed them some silage one day, and uh, all of a sudden. Abalone had big blisters, and we thought, like, oh shit, <laughs> have a herpes virus, <laughs> which had just happened in Australia, and it was devastating over there to, to the farmed abalone and the wild industry. And, and so we're freaking out, making phone calls, and, and uh, it, it turns out we just we didn't rinse that kelp, and it still had big salt granules, and that the salt, if made direct contact on the foot cause those blisters. Oh, interesting. Which, which cleared up in no time once, you know, once they're removed from that. But, uh, and from that point, we always rinsed the <laughs> kelp really good before we fed it out. But yeah, that just scared the hell out of us. <laughs> um, anyway, so, you know, we can chat up here all day and I'd be happy to entertain any questions you guys have. But really what you're going to find exciting is the farm. So if you guys are ready, Let's go see it. Let's go see the farm. Now, are these the cages you guys use over here? Uh, you'll, you'll see, yeah, yeah.